I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are gathering here today on the unceded and unsurrendered Treaty 6 and Métis Region 4 territory. We acknowledge that many First Nations, non-status Métis and Inuit have lived in and cared for these lands for time immemorial. Yesterday, today and beyond, we honor all MMEIP, missing, murdered and exploited Indigenous people, their family members, the survivors, our elders, medicine people, knowledge keepers, Indigenous leadership and communities and allies. We also honor our relatives who've gone on their journey into the spirit world. Thank you to of Amber Tuckro for holding a safe space for us to gather here today. I'd also like to, uh, just uh, before we, I hand uh, the mic over to um, our speakers and guests here. Um, so only, only those on the agenda will be speaking today. And I please ask that you put your phones on silent. And uh, there is also resolution health support workers, um, IRS workers um, present. Um, should we need some uh, more support in the room for anybody? I just want you to be aware of that. So first of all, I'd like to um, introduce uh, Treaty 8 Grand Chief, Arthur Noski, who's going to be speaking now. Thank you. Hello. Hey, good, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I know it's uh, this is a hard place to be, you know, knowing that the family are, family are here of Amber and uh, the tragedy that keeps following our, our First Nations people. I commend the work, you know, for the past 13 years of the family, not only their search for justice for Amber, but also to recognize the value of life as, as parents, as brothers. And uh, life is precious to us as a people. It's always been. And in saying that, uh, you know, having the police here the, uh, the directors the sergeants you know to be able to witness this and hope at some point influence the higher ups what is required what is required not only in policing and in the justice system to uh, put an end to the wait times you know, in a, in a death, in a family death, when you have a body there and you're saying your goodbyes, it brings closer to that part. And not being able to witness, you know, the family loss or the person lost is an ongoing grievance. It's an ongoing need to heal and to bring closure. It's been 13 years and I pray to God that at some point there'll be closure. Whoever that voice was to get convicted to be able to say, yes, it was me. That would be start the process of healing and bring, bringing closure to this tragedy. So with that, thank you. Thank you, Chief Noski. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, uh, leadership that is also present here today. Um, and I'd like to now introduce uh, Chief Alan Adam of the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation to speak. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to the family. And you know, sad to be here amongst the family to speak on this issue when families should be gathered together and share stories about well-being. But I'm Alan Adam of the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation. I'm here today representing the Athabasca Tribal Council as the 
president and board of directors for ATC. I want to start by thanking Amber Tuckrow's family and friends for continuing to fight for justice for Amber. Your resilience in the face of so many barriers to find answers and inspirations. ATC is here to support Amber Tuckrow's family in their continued fight for justice for Amber. Amber was a Miccosu Cree First Nation member and a member of the Athabasca Tribal Council. The five First Nations make up of membership of the Athabasca Tribal Council, and we have all experienced mis in our own communities. The years of generational trauma, ignorance, racism, and misogyny had left many vulnerable to violence and injustice. The investigation into Amber's disappearance was mishandled. Racism and bias changed how Amber's cases was handled and continues to be handled today is unjustified. Her family was not given the support and resources need to find her. Amber's family has been fighting for justice for a decade and they deserve answers and closure. This young woman deserves more. She deserves to have her life valued and her disappearance taken seriously. As an indigenous leader, it is my duty to stand up for our people, to demand justice by keeping the spotlight on the tragic loss like Amber's. As president of the Athabasca Tribal Council, I give my unwavering support to Amber Tuckros and her family as they seek for justice. I hope all that hears this message today will reach out and find some way to support justice for Amber in any way they can. Answer the calls to stand up with us to find Amber's killer. Hi, hi, Marcy Cho. Thank you, Chief Adam. Thank you very much. I'd like um, to now introduce the panel, the Tuckerow family, Amber's mom, Tootsie Tuckerow, her brothers, Paul, and Miccosoe Cree First Nation Chief, Billy Joe Tuckerow. Also in attendance is uh, Amber's brother, Conrad, and his partner, Carrie, who is not sitting on the panel, but present today. So I'd like to hand that over to you now. I'd like to thank everybody for attending uh, today's press conference. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the elder for her prayer today. And I'd also like to uh, thank the Treaty 6 Nations for hosting us today to do this press conference. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, extend our condolences from our family to the, the EPS and, and uh, the tragedy that happened this morning. They lost a couple of their younger members from our family to you guys uh, we send our condolences also I'd like to thank uh, my fellow chiefs for being here today also leadership and also everybody that's here uh, to support uh, support us um, today is a today is a very emotional day for us as I was sitting here speaking to uh, uh, Grand Chief Noski is asking us questions about uh, our family. It brought back a flood of emotions. I, I I shared our story with him about how Amber was given to us when she was three days old. My mom and dad traveled to uh, high level Alberta, and she was uh, given to us through adoption from my one of my cousins and his uh, spouse at that time. Uh, they made the trek when it was minus 40 and they came back home on uh, About three or four days later with her and I still remember it was a it was a cold January day minus 40 and I still remember Getting the call to uh, come home and see my sister for the first time um, It was about 3 30 in the morning and of course I raced home Um it's probably one of the happiest days of my life to actually have a sister of our own now. I fell asleep with uh, with her in my arms that night. 
Um, so please, please, please bear with us today as, uh, as, it, uh, as we go through this. It can be emotional for us. But at the same time, when this all came about many years ago, over a decade, uh, our, our sister's case was mishandled from the, from the get-go. We were told that by an RCMP member. And it was weird after he, uh, he told us that. And at the time, too, we were had in attendance uh, the chief at the time, Steve Kudray. He witnessed uh, and heard, and there was other people in attendance when the, the RCMP, RCMP member at the time made reference to uh, that the case was mishandled. And uh, from then, a couple years later was when we found our, we found our sister Amber. We, uh, our goal as a family was to not let another Aboriginal person case go uh, that goes missing just to be swept under the rug. And till this day, 10 years later, we're still dealing with this. As I just had a member go missing uh, about a month ago, his name was Jade Mackay. They, the RCMP did not take the case serious. I don't understand why we do public inquiries to these if uh, if the recommendations aren't considered or it are taken into consideration and act and actually acted on. The days of us just being an an inconvenient Indian is over. No matter who we are as a as a person, you cut us all. We all bleed red. No matter what what race we're from. And that has always been our stance was, as a family, was to advocate for other Aboriginal families and for this to keep going on 10 years later and these recommendations is totally unacceptable. That's why today, as the family, to really step up your game, today from, you see, I started the thing is, we sent our condolences to the, to the EPS that tells you we're not we're not being confrontational on this we want answers we want to be treated as human beings just like, like everybody else and with that I just uh, like to leave that there and I'll hand it over to uh, my mother Tutsi thank you Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to, like my son Billy just said, send our condolences to the two members that were that were were killed this morning. Um, as a parent, that's something that you never want to hear about your child. It doesn't matter how how you, you lose your child. So my heart goes out to the families. And I really appreciate everyone for coming out today and giving us the strength that we need to continue on our, our Justice for Amber journey. <clears throat> we had a sharing circle last night which was was awesome. It it was a sharing, caring, emotional. But yet I gathered a lot of strength from that last night, from other families that were there sharing their stories and being in the same situation that we're in of unanswered questions. Basically what it comes down to is you report your child missing to be told. Oh, they'll come. They'll they'll be home when they're done partying, whatever. And that seems to be the the norm, which is bullshit. 
And for a second, I would like for the RCMP or whoever takes the information when a parent r reports their child missing, put yourself in their shoes and, and think, well, what if that was me? What if that was my child? And I get told, oh, they'll come home. They'll come home on their den party. Just, just give that a thought. It's going on 13 years. We still have no answer. We still have, we still don't know who Amber's killer is. And that itself, like, it's a daily struggle. It's a daily struggle. And then you go on the news or you see on the news, Facebook, whatever, another missing, missing person. I mean, my heart breaks for them. And I feel their pain. My grandson now is going to be 14 in May. And Mama can't protect them anymore from the internet, from like people trying to contact him and whatever. Because there are horrible people out there. There are evil people out there. And I'm speaking from experience when I get messages, phone calls and whatever. And I pray and I pray all the time that this doesn't happen to, to Jacob. But that it probably will. So I have to always be prepared to be there to protect him, to be his mama, who's going to protect him. I'm going to share something right now, and it's, it, it just breaks my heart. You know, when the, the, the kids, the children that were being found from residential schools and how they use the scanners to, to, to find the bodies. Jacob heard it on the news. Jacob sees it on the internet. And he comes and sits down beside me and he's like, he knows because I have to be honest with him. I have to let him know what I know and always be honest with him. And Jacob said to me, Mama, you know that machine that they use to find bodies? And I was like, yeah. He's like, my mom was not all found. Not all of her was found. Can we, can we ask that they use that to go and find the rest of my mom? <laughs> like how, how does one answer that? Like how, uh, how? Like, <laughs> and you know, and I also think about the other families of the missing and murdered. And they probably have thoughts like that. Like that, that was my thought initially when I, when I first heard that. But I wish I was never here. I wish I was not here speaking right now. I wish my daughter was here. I wish Amber was with Jacob to be a mom to her her brothers to be with her brothers but she's not so we have i have to continue to be her voice no matter how painful no matter whatever it takes i have to continue to be her voice she's my baby she's my baby girl she's my son's baby sister and last but not least she's jacob's mom and some dirty bastard out there stole my baby's life from her family, from her son. Look at me right now, like wh whoever, if you're sitting on information, you know, and yet you don't call in, you don't come forward with information that you have. And if, if you have information that 
doesn't have anything to do with the voice recording that's being released about Amber, please come forward if you know something about Amber's killer, what happened to Amber that day. Please come forward, I beg you, like, please help us find Amber's killer. But one thing I know for sure, I will never, never give up, and I will never be swayed to, do, to say what I want to say. I have, I have a voice, and I am Amber's voice, and I will continue to be Amber's voice. You know, I, I wish today we could be sitting here to say that Amber's killer has been caught, but that's not the case. It's other information that we want to share with the with the public, and and that's in regards to the the report and how we're going to release it to the public. Not today. We're still working on some final stages of. In, in the process of doing so. I mean, it's a 161-page report. And, and if there's any families out there that need help, they need support, resources, whatever, we're here. Just Facebook me or call me. My number's out there. We will help you. Because there's too many people out there that don't have the strength to come forward and do what I did. But you know what? I put in the complaint because Amber's case was mishandled right from the very, very start. Right from the time I called to report my daughter missing. And thank God for the one RCMP who finally told the family this was what was happening for her. So then I put in a complaint. They said, well, maybe you'll wait two years. I think we waited four. But, and there was, you know, how many allegations did I make that time? Thirteen, I think, huh? Yep. Thirteen. And in there, I said there was racism. And the finding was, no, there wasn't. Okay? I guess not. But are we going to sit back and let this continue? That's my thing. Like, are we going to be, are we going to continue to be stereotype and just sit back and just let it go? No. No more. Like, no more. We are very proud people. People don't give us, like, they just know us as this drunk, stupid, whatever. But you know what? We're caring, we're loving, we're, we're a community we, we, that we care for each other. We, we love each other. And we have feelings. We have feelings just like anyone else. So please quit with all this racism and all this, like, it, we're all, we're all people, we're all human beings, it doesn't matter if you're brown, black, whatever, whatever color, we still all hurt the same. I, I kind of found something. <clears throat> Not kind of. Oh. It's like Grant. We're not here to badmouth the police and that. I just want for the, <clears throat> the police that mishandled Amber's case to be held accountable. And were they? Like, were they really? We don't know. Probably got, got sent home. With, with pay for a week or something. That's just my own. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But I did. So, if Amber's case was handled 
properly right from day one. Who's to say that Amber would still be here with us? There were so many wrongs. So many wrongs. And those things need to be fixed. We, we no longer deal with the Ladoo police. We deal with, with the police here in Edmonton. Um, okay. We are able to, to, to work together somewhat, but it shouldn't have to be well, the family is always having to reach out. Right? Like I'm, I'm sure they have they have workers like give a call to say going like you know like for for the families that don't have no one they don't no one there to help them or whatever like what do I do now my child's missing what do I do that way and to be informed and I have like and and something I always think about is like the police will fly up to come up to Fort Chip to see us. They'll fly us down here so we could come and meet with them. And we do stuff like that. But there are other families as well out there. I'm not saying go to every family, but have that communication is key in, in all of this. Like you, you need to. So that's where I'm going with that is everybody needs a little help and and if I can help one family by sitting up here and speaking, that makes my heart happy. Thank you. <clears throat> well, good morning everyone. Um I'd like to thank everybody for, for coming out. Uh, it's nice to see leadership from our home community here. You know, thank you guys for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, when we were planning the conference, um, one of the focus was, um, you know, we wanted to let the families know, here we are going on 13 years, and, you know, we're still fighting for answers since day one. Um, and we're not going to stop, because that's, uh, that's, that's not how we are. Um, I'd like to thank the Grand Chief, for, for, for talking, Chief Alan Adam, for being here. And also with, like, yesterday, like, when we had that sharing circle, it was, pr it was pretty emotional, and, and I think, you know what, as, as families, we, um, like, there's a lot of families that are hurting, and, you know, and, and they want answers, they want, but I feel for them because, you know, they, they try to ask for help from, you know, they go to RCMP, and even to this day, you still we still see it. Um, you feel it as as an indigenous person. You know, we're, we're so stereotyped, but yet, like even last night, I was in the mall walking around in the store. You know, I was like, oh, somebody's following me. You know, so finally, I just told this person, you know, if you're gonna follow me, at least help me carry my stuff. You know, but with. Like my mom mentioned with the CRCC report, you know, sure, we are we work with the RCMP now, and we got that communication where, you know, if, I like to think in ways that if we need something, we're able to call them, but we can't forget about what happened at that time, because right now a lot of families are still at that time, you know, sure, we're, we're here today, you know, and we, we have so much support. We want to help families that are, like I said, still at that time where they don't even know what to do and they're still getting, they're still getting treated the way they are. So we're, you know, through my sister's case, you know, you know, we we all know it was mishandled, but yet a lot of there's, you know, there's been policy changes. Um, there's been some things that were created, and you know, and that's why we wanted to be here today to let the people know that there there are resources out there. Like say, for example, there's a Alberta Missing Persons Act, which speeds up. 
you know, where you go report someone missing and now it's just that, oh, you just sit and wait. But now with that Alberta Missing Persons Act, that gives the RCMP, you know, they're able to go to, to the Justice of Peace or where they're able to go and get records like, um, like bank records, phone records. It just speeds up the whole process. And, and I think that's what he wanted to, to let the families know. Because every second matters. Like my brother mentioned there, like with well, that young man there, like it's only after, you know, only after we came together and did what you did with the family. You know, I, I feel, but, but yet they, um, you know, they, they feel that family as well. You know, out of respect for them, you know, we can't, you know, I'm not going to comment in, any more on that just because that's, you know, we just feel, we, we feel for the family. And that's one of the reasons why we canceled the press conference at that time, because, you know, we wanted to be there as a support for them. And, you know, like same, like what, what, the what the report there, there's, um, I found it. Yep. You know, I, I really think that we need to, um, like we can have all the press conferences we want, but yet if there's no action, and that's what I was just thinking to come in here, like what, what action are we going to do today now? You know, like what, like really what, like, you know, we're all here. You know, I know, you know, the media is here. Um, the RCMP are here. But you know what, it's... Um, but like, really, what are we going to do? Like, what are we going to do going forward? We could do all the policy changes that we want. They talk about it, but they're not a, I'm a believer, you know, if you, if you sit back and do nothing, nothing happens. But then how, how are we going to help these families? You know, like they did a mission, the missing murdered in National Inquiry, you know, which I went there and I testified. And out of that came all these um, calls to action. Um, you know, even with my sister's case, there was the, um, 20... There was 23 findings and there were 17 recommendations and that's it you know it you know talk is cheap you know like you really like things are like a little bit diff different now but back then they weren't like we had to we had to you know with the help of the and that's why i love, I love being an indigenous person because you know what we're the best kind of people i believe because you know what, we could have nothing, but we could be the happiest, you know, you know, there's, there's so much laughter, there's so much love, and even back home in our community, when something happens, everybody comes together, they pull together, you know, put the differences aside, you know, because that's, that's, that's how we are as First Nations people, and I can guarantee this, and I'll say this here, you know what, I guarantee it of, of all non-natives, I guarantee it if there's, if, you know, if we're all, I guarantee you're going to follow that Indian. <laughs> You know, and that's just the truth, you know, because you go, oh, you know, because you never know when we're going to um, need that, need that help. Yeah, I was just thinking it was, you know, 13 years and I was just sitting in the room last night thinking like what to say, you know, I had two other fam family members, Judy and my, my daughter was supposed to be here, but un unfortunately they're, they're not. Because a lot of times we, as families, you know, we he, hear about it on the news and right away I'm like, you know what, let's, how can we get a hold of this family? Because I know, we know what, what resources are, what's available. Like even same with, um, our dream is to say when you go report somebody missing, that you could go there and, oh, report the missing and, and the person on the other side of the table says what they're going to do. And you leave there with a piece of paper saying they took all the information. Because we were able to get my sister's um, missing person report, and you know what? Not everything was filled out. You know, we, like even with the report, like my mom said, you know, we're going to release it at a later date, but it's like, um, we're going through it. We want to make sure we put out the right information because it's going to, it's going to help families. Like, like, like when you read it, you're going to be like, people are shocked at just the way we're treated. Like who, who in their right mind goes just take evidence and throws it in the garbage. You know, and then and then say, "Oh, we're sorry." You know how? Maybe, maybe there was um. Maybe there's DNA. Maybe there's something that was on there. 
And you know, I understand and I respect the, you know for them what what they have to do. But at the same time, you know, they I really think they need to, you know, like my mom said, put yourself in in their shoes. And then just like people, non-native people go missing, and just like, you know, why why are we why are we treated different than, but yet we um, they talk about truth and reconciliation, when again there talk. I say always say, oh yeah, you know what? We're from Chip. Like nobody will go missing from Chip. You know, we're an isolated small community. But you know what? My sister did, and so did a lot of others. And at the same time, it's like how how do we help those those families? Yeah, it's like like how do how do you? I know the press conference is like it's not as long as we want it to be, but it's like how do you put everything into thirteen going on thirteen years into a little short press conference? You know, we want to. Let the families know that you know what don't give up you know don't give up you, you can't you can't give up because just because you go knock on the door rcmp and they don't want to help you you know what they have to help you you know they if you if you don't get the help ask just ask to speak to whoever's whoever's in charge and you know we we're told by rcmp but how do we get that message out there because it's so, like we're like i feel for the ones that are for that are in small communities and the word they don't um they don't get you go there and say oh we're working on a case there's no updates we had a young man in fort chip go go he got killed you know nothing nothing in this little small town and and then yet the family wants answers too and and, that, and, and that's our cousin but it's like oh same thing we're working on it you know um <sighs> Yeah, that's what um, like mom said with that report. That I I think it's critical. Like I even want to get like my my sister's story so big. There's so much things, and I w I just want to share it with everybody because there's so much that could be done with it. It could be taught in schools, you know. Like 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 that could be a course in itself. That you know, it's like it's gonna help so many people. The same like uh, we how do how how do we make that happen? Like I think about my sister every day. You know, I think, you know, if she was alive, what, what would she be doing? And, you know, like, like mom said, Jacob. And then it's funny that we, you know, we found a lot of stuff on our own and we got a lot of unanswered questions. And to this day, we're still trying to get those questions answered. Um, cause a lot of, cause you know, truth be told, we got in black and white. It was mishandled. Sure. You know, it was back then, but we're still going to, um, we still got to keep persevering here as a family and, we're here for everybody because the bigger picture is how to um because it really it really affects the family um like my kids were close to, to to my sister as they were with all my other brothers kids you know even i was like even when i was coming here my kids were asking me like what are you going to say you know just like what 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 would amber want to say you know what <laughs> i know what you want to say but i can't you know probably be a few swear words in there or whatever but you know, and I, like even last night at the hotel we're staying there, I seen some young indigenous woman there was hanging around her, and I was like, holy shit, you know what? But what do you, but, but what do you, how do you help, how do you help our, our, our own people? Yeah, that's all safe for now. Is my mic on? Okay. Thank you, Paul, for sharing that, Tutsi, the family. Um, I would like to now open the floor to the media for any questions for the family.
Good. Now everybody can hear me. Danny or Danielle Parody, APTN. And um, as you know, we've been covering this case for a really long time. So I, I'm just looking for some clarity on the reports. There was a 2018 report, and then now they've done an additional report. Or uh, what was the what, what's the difference between the two? It, that was just the, the recommendations and finding from that report. But the actual report, like my mom said, is over 100 pages. Yeah. Okay, so they're releasing a whole 161-page report. Yeah, or whatever. What We're still deciding. We're almost close to it, but we're yeah. still figuring out what, what we're going to release. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there anything... Um, y you did speak a little bit, uh, Tootsie, to the person uh you know on the voicemail or maybe even the person who last saw amber alive was there anything else that you want to say to them oh just if like if uh, there's people out there that know something about amber's case but that has nothing to do with the with the voice. Like they know who killed Amber, but it's not the voice to come forward to to come forward so we could get a conviction. Okay, thank you. I think Omar wants to ask Omar. Perfect, thank you. Hi, Omar from Toronto Star. Um, in the portion of the that you did release, there was numerous references to a person who the police failed to locate and interview. I'm not asking you to like say their name or release anything that hasn't already been released, but just in terms of, I guess, the part question. Um, first off, do you think the outcome would have been differently if this person who was never located or interviewed was from the community or indigenous? And I guess just in terms of next steps, this person, do you believe there's still a lot of value in locating this person, interviewing this person? Do you still feel like whoever this person was, um, there's still unanswered questions? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Had she been interviewed right from the get-go because she was probably one of the last person to, to have seen Amber, um, but there again, her her stories weren't inconsistent. Like they were never the same stories. She's not a suspect. She's not a person of interest. And I think she she knows she knows she knows about Amber. She knows what happened. Or part of what happened, or and I think that's there's a big, big piece of the puzzle that she has, is what I'll say. And in the, the report, I'm just going to read you a little something as to what uh, person of interest in the report. There's a, a thing, the special. SIP, Special Interest Police. This acronym is placed on C CPIC, CPIC and used as a flag by the police to highlight certain info or warn the police regarding a person of interest. That was in, in the report. But we don't have a person of interest in regards to your question. Thank you, Tootsie. And then a follow-up question. Um, if we never had that phone call that <clears throat> resulted in, you know, people across the country and across the world hearing that phone call in Amber's voice and that man's voice, if we never had that phone call, do you think you would have got a public apology? Do you think this case would have got so much attention? Do you think we would still be talking about it here 13 years later? Okay. <clears throat> I can guarantee that we wouldn't be sitting here today. We would have the, we'd be a lot farther 
in regards to being unknown of what actually happened to our sister. It was weird. When the when they did find Amber, they really they released the the voice recording on I believe it was a Tuesday. They located my sister like three or four days later. Is it coincidence? Or people knew what was going on right away? Because we we went to the site of where my sister was located. And being indigenous people, we know in a dense area, forested area, there's no way anybody's going to be horseback riding in an area like that. When we're the, the, the area that they did comb, there's adjacent bu bush to it. It was all dense, dense bush. There's no way anybody's going to be horseback riding. And if anybody was to locate her from the, the clearing, they couldn't see in there. And then we, like I said, when we did go visit the area, the the highway is right here, and then my sister was found on a on a portion of a land that goes up in the area here. There's no way, even from that from the road, that they could have located Amber there. We truly believe that uh, the way the case was mishandled from the get go was uh, neg negligence on the RCMP. They there was an uh, they were. Right from the get-go, they said there were three days later, I believe they said there was a unconfirmed sighting of her in Alexander Reserve. Then that was the day that they took down her uh, missing persons report. Totally unacceptable. That's that's the, that's the respect we get as Native people. And until that day, until the day changes, like I said earlier, we're just an inconvenient Indian to 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 the RCMP. Um. It was weird, like the, like I said earlier about the, uh, the RCMP that made, made reference to what happened to my sister and how the case was mishandled. The guy was never seen or heard from again. Why? It's because somebody was being accountable. And that's all we want, for people to be, to be accountable to, uh, to missing persons uh, reports. We as indigenous people, we... Uh, when we go missing, it's and then we put up the red flags and stuff. It's it's always it's always it's always the same thing where we have to raise the concerns on Facebook or social media ourselves before anything's taken to, into consideration or serious. Um, and a, another lady just went missing. Uh, she wasn't from my First Nation. I believe she was from uh, Beaver First Nation. Again. Family concern? No, RCMP wouldn't take it uh, serious. Same with the EPS here. Oh, she's just parting out missing. Her friend said the same thing too. She, she was concerned. Again, nothing nothing taken serious. Um, come back next week, they told her. Next week, the person could be dead. Put yourself in our shoes. It's uh, like I said about, I made reference to Jade McKay earlier, and I'm going to speak on his case again. Again, that's another one that they're going to probably be doing a public inquiry again. Same, there's, I guarantee the same recommendation and the findings are going to be the same ones that, with him. Because I know for a fact, because I was there when I, when I went to see the family. When I, when I did speak with his, with his mother, Loretta, she said that uh, search and rescue wasn't activated. I mean, if the RCMP don't want to do their job, activate search and rescue. Because I know for a fact, after I was there and I spoke to the family, and then the lead investigator was there, I said, okay, well, I need you guys to activate search and rescue. You wouldn't believe it from the time they activated it until they found him was about five hours from, from where he was deceased. And and what, what frustrates me was it had to take a, another member from my community who who was searching for him for uh, for um, Mr. Mackay, and he went to the person's house. They had a video camera of him trying to get into this house because he was freezing in minus forty, running around forty below when the RCMP were notified, and they did nothing. That's why I'm. That's why today I'm saying this as a First Nations leader. If you don't have the trust in the RCMP, call the call the fire department. They will come no matter what. They will come. 
because it, it's totally unacceptable of how this young man was treated and it was the same way with my sister 10 years later same recommendation is going to come from his findings is first nations people got to be treated fairly and taken their case taken serious um that's all we're asking that's why we're up here today to be advocates for for the next family and then like like my mom said if we can help one family that's what that we we did we did what what our sister would want us to do and that's be her voice and then and like my mom said till the day that uh the killer is found and convicted there's no closure and and i truly believe until that like like my mom made reference to jacob earlier that was hard when you when they bring a box to the community and they tell us her, her skull is in there I uh till this day it's still hard when you can't say goodbye to somebody that you love. And I've always said this too, like Paul said earlier. If you're from Fort Chip, we we can trust anybody else that we know. But if you don't know anybody else, you're coming to another community, make sure you you know your surroundings. Make sure you know people in the community that you can turn to because you just don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is uh, there are any more questions? Family? Yeah, um, someone just texted me and they want a question there. She's from Fort Chip. Vice President of the METI. She wants to ask, um, you know, the inquiry was done. And then, then she asked, so why is it that leadership does not use that to make more change? And then they do uh, inquiries for indigenous people when something tragic happens, but never any, any follow through. So, my, so just uh, probably a question for, for leadership or RCMP, do you want to answer? Anybody on the spot here, but thank you for that uh, that question. And I, I I would say this is a very chief. You said it earlier. Uh, this is a difficult time um, for the family. I can't, uh, you know, certainly our our, our thoughts uh, are with you and your family um, and the other families who have been. Uh, victimized by events like this. And I can tell you this from, from the RCMP that we are committed, uh, and Tootsie, we said this in our, in our previous meeting, we are committed to move forward with this investigation. And I would say this too, there is one person out there responsible for this. And I can tell you this, that uh, we are not stopping. We will do what it takes to bring that person to justice. We have, uh, an extensive investigation that's gone on for years and will continue to, it's not stopping. We have dedicated uh, and committed uh, investigators here with us today that are gonna continue to move this forward. The other thing I would like to say is there's people that know things that maybe they didn't say it years ago, maybe they haven't said it yet, but like all of us, we heard a mom today we heard a mom who's hurting and a family and a community that's devastated by what happened. So I would say this, the people that are out there that know, that have information, no matter what they think that is, I would ask them to come forward as well. This investigation is not going, it's not stopping, and this family's commitment to making change is not going to stop either. So I would like to, reassure you that from the top of this organization that we're committed to moving this investigation forward and we'll continue to do so. Can we have your name and, uh, and your sure. It's Assistant Commissioner, 
Trevor Daru, D-A-R-O-U-X, and I'm the Criminal Operations Officer for the Province of Alberta. Thank you very much. Um, if uh, do we have any more questions for the family? So with that, I just want to say, uh, pardon me. Would you like? To Is there anyone else that like to add? Please do. You know, um, on behalf of leadership, uh, you know, when we look at reports and when we find evidence of wrongdoing or mishandling and stuff like that all we ask is that to be come forth and telling the truth because hiding information uh, is key of misleading and too many times our communities and leaders and families have been misled uh, based on missing and murdered women i've been a chief now for 15 years plus and i've seen numerous uh, incidents where missing and murdered women go missing and never ever be be found. We have Shirley Walkwood from our own community, still missing. We have another lady from Janvey named Jazz, still missing. Her body went missing behind the Hope Center in Fort McMurray, assumed to be put inside a dumpster, and yet they cannot find her. This has gone on too long. The Aluk family from Anzac, where the woman was dragged out of her own dwelling, still missing today. That has to stop. The RCMP have to be accounted when missing and murdered women come into play. Not only missing and murdered women, but missing and murdered men as well. Because there are a bunch of missing and murdered men out there as well too. This thing is so big, there are no answers to it anymore because nobody doesn't want to come forward. And what I hear today about the finding about Amber's body and everything, I thought she was found out in the open field. To find out that she was found inside a wooded area by horseback riding tells me something that somebody else knows what's going on here. There is something bigger to this whole big picture. And if I were the RCMP, I would go back to the person that found the body and ask the question very seriously, what do you know about this incident? Because something to me just triggers off right now, and that's a flag for me. So with that, you know, I support the family of Amber. I've always supported the family of Amber. And every time I listen to this and when I go around the YouTube and I come up with cold cases and just recently, there were cases of 10 different incidents across the world. And it's surprisingly enough, Amber's case was one of them. So do you know how big this is? And the family needs answers. Tootsie needs answers. Because if she does not get the answers, she'll always be at the face of the RCMP telling you guys that we need justice here. And she needs justice and she needs closure. You know, and to have the remains missing of the head. Is there a trophy hunter out there that's collecting our, our missing body parts? We have to ask all those questions because if it is, then it's very serious about this whole situation. That's all I could say. Thank you very much for that. So now I just want to uh, say a special thank you uh, to everybody who uh, joined in um, with the family at uh, the sharing circle last night. Thank you very, very much. Uh, this is so important as it, it, it gives the family hope and support and, and they know that they're loved and supported by many, many people out there that, you know, are experiencing loss you know, they're lost loved ones as well, and they're missing loved ones, and that want the families that want answers. So I thank everyone that came out for the sharing circle last night, and I also I want to thank everybody that's here today. Um, um, the Athabasca Tribal Council, Treaty 8 First Nations of Alberta, FILU, the Family Information Li Liaison Unit with the Government of Alberta, 
the Stolen Sisters and Brothers Action Movement, Resolution Health Support Worker, IRS, and also to the media. Thank you for, for being here and, and covering this. This is so very important to so many people. You have no idea how important this is and that message needs to be out there to everybody, to all the families that are experiencing what the Takaro family is, is, is experiencing as well. And also to um, also say thank you to everybody who's joined on, uh, on uh, virtual, virtually. I'd like to say thank you to those as well, to those people that have joined. And again, to all the family, friends, community that are here today and that are out there watching and listening, please, please come forward if you have any information. Thank you again for all your support. And um, I also like to say that um, we are going to have a, a, a mini justice rally outside in about five minutes. And again, miigwech for everybody being here today. Thank you.